You know what I'm missing right now? And I think as we sort of look to the second half of 2024 and what's ahead, as the Giants embark on this really important week and a half, and it's also, let's see, what's today? July 19th? What do we have? About about two and a half weeks till Lowry Markinen Day? Yep. Okay, and camp is opening next week. We're going to go down there and see the 49ers. You got Ayuk drama. You and I were in the other room talking before the show about the Niners are such a show right now. There's so much attention around the 49ers from the national Brock Purdy debate to now this Ayuk thing to having all the good players at all the positions to all the Super Bowls and NFC title games and all the near misses and the traveling fan base better than any fan base in America. Add all those things together, and I'm looking at this year, this now coming year, and I just had this feeling go through my belly of like, good God, those games are going to be an event. I don't care, and I mean home and road. A 49er game is almost going to feel like, only one time in my life have I been to a Packer game at Lambeau Field. Whoop. Thank you. It was because of Tony Bruno, by the way. Uh, Packers Eagles, the opener in 2000 something and um, Brett Favre era. And we go there and just to give everybody like, I hope everyone knows it's not a joke when people go, boy, the town shuts down during a Packer game. <laughs> no, 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 no. The town shuts down during a Packer game. The grocery store is closed. Closed. The town is closed. <laughs> during a Packer game. You can't do anything. And um, obviously San Francisco and Santa Clara and everywhere in between are not going to close. But there's going to be almost that kind of, an, to me, um, an emotional feel around 49er games this year. And I'm craving that. With the Warriors not going to the playoffs and the Giants uncorking another... <laughs> Like, I, I, it feels like it has been some time since the intensity muscle right. has been flexed in Bay Area sports. The juice. Yes. That, that feeling of like, oh, my God, it's must watch and it's all eyes on this. And I just did the math and we are seven weeks and three days away, Mark. Seven weeks and three days away from scat da 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 The Jets come to town Monday Night Football, September 9th. Down at Levi's. We'll be there. We'll be broadcasting nearby. Matt will be there. Exactly. Go, go ahead. we got to make sure we speak that into existence. We will be there. Seven weeks and three days. So 52 days from now, which feels like a lot, but it also feels like nothing at all. Feels like nothing. Right. That's the, when you say that number and uh, when Scott Hansen goes on Twitter and he's like, six Sundays to go. <laughs> I'm just like, oh God, like yeah. Yeah, that's that's real close. It is real close. And the first preseason game, which doesn't have the same juice, no, obviously, yeah, but, but that is three weeks from tomorrow. So as we start to think about football and football being back in three weeks from tomorrow, they're at Tennessee for the first well, preseason game. You're talking about the Niners. Like Correct. there, there yeah. will be preseason game in a week and a half, right? It's fine, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The and Hall of Fame. The, the Hall of Fame, yeah. yeah. Which bet the under. And you guys can go ahead and fade the dibber. And I'll have <laughs> I'll have my block of the day later today because I'm running so cold that these guys are fading me and they're winning well, money. Last time I'm you here for you. Last time you said bet the under, <clears throat> the overhead. Which was thanks to your guy. Logan Webb. Yeah. And Shohei Otani. Don't forget him. Yeah. Well, you expect him to go deep. Well, he didn't have to do it with two runners on base. Jaron Duran. Jaron yeah. Duran. Household name now. Yeah. Where'd I mean, you get that at, Lucas? Because I did look up Lucy Birds, and she said it was at plus 4,500. I mean, every book has these MVP odds as something well, different. What did, you, what did you have it at? I, I'm guessing it was between 70 and 100 to 1. Well, that's terrible odds, isn't it? Or am I doing it wrong? No, that's great odds. That means you bet a buck and you win seventy. You bet a buck. Oh, so that's so. So a hundred wins yeah. you seven grand. Yes. Oh, so she's saying she got it at plus forty five hundred, and Which you got it at that. plus seven thousand. It's it's all different. Okay. Books. All right. Also, I, Dibs, you you uh, you teased uh, giving us a, a lock yesterday, and we missed that. And well, there was no did. event yesterday. Mm. I, I was going to give us a summer tease? league lock. Yeah, mm. but yeah, why'd you tease then? Mm. I didn't pay off the tease. 
Unfortunately, I mean, there had to be something. Today. That'd be like a W. I'll get you two today. Was it no, WNBA WNBA's game? at the break too. They are. Yeah. Why would they do that? Because uh, you get the Why Olympics coming up. Why does everybody get? No, but, then do it then. The break is now. The break is now. Okay. Yeah. And the big news of the WNBA: Caitlin Clark opts out of the three-point contest. Mm-hmm. After why setting she, the single game assist record, why did she loss. Why'd she do that? Why? I, I don't know. And why did you do the Steiny thing? I don't know. enough. We get enough people doing that on their show. If you notice that Evan Giddings can't stop doing it now, he comes on the air, and it doesn't matter what sentence he says, he finishes it with that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, enough. I'm not, you don't have to say it after like, hey guys, I got to go to the restroom. Mm-hmm. Like you, it doesn't. There's a certain thing that there he's doing, but he's doing it that. Funny. It's very much an I told you so, or I'm poke, 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 ah, ah, I'm poking at Completely. you. Yay. We don't just use it because you're like, so I think the Giants will win seven out of the next 11. Mm-hmm. But no, we all seems do like it. it got under your skin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's a it got under my skin because you did it. You don't work mm-hmm. on Steiny and Goo. Mm-hmm. But we all kind of assimilate each other's material, uh, you know, here and there as we what, all. What is that? It's an assimilation sensation. Okay, thank you. Is what it is. I'm going to make you pay for this crap. Yeah. And sometimes I'll give you the guru sniff. <laughs> Do a guru that's right. Sniff. You know, that's guru's version of the mm-hmm. Let's go! He'll hit you with oh, the sorry. Yeah. While we're just 8 doing. 8 o'clock. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I want to go back to the playoffs. Uh, that's my butcher. I'm tired of getting pushed around. <sighs> anyway. Should I say hi to exotic dancers at 8 in the morning? Should we do that in a half hour? Exactly. All okay. the people getting All off right. the uh, yeah. off the night shift, the graveyard. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, you should do that. All right. Let's... Seven weeks and two days, Mark. What's three seven, days. What's in seven weeks and two days? Scott, da, da, da. Monday night football. Oh, that's Niners the Niners Niners Because you were talking about how this year is going to be, like, every game is going to feel like a show. Oh, God. And that Monday night opener, Aaron Rodgers uh, at Levi's, Dude, it's, it's, Monday Night Football. I, I, like, I can't even contain myself. Are you kidding me? Right. Ugh. Then you go to Minnesota. Then you've got, that was crazy on the road, Kelly Stafford and her <laughs> husband who may or may not play. They're going to be good now. The Rams are going to play. You got the Belichick-less Patriots coming to town. And, and even though that's going to be... And that's and, a win for me, dog. Yeah, and then Arizona comes in. Those that's are, a win those for are me, lower dog. wattage games, but still, this Niner show... And maybe it's because I'm all wrapped up in Receiver, the documentary on Netflix. But Debo and Kittle, I I can't wait to watch these guys get out there. I need more Kittle and Debo on the mic. Like, okay, I have to stop and think about this statement before I make it. Just make it recklessly. Well, I'm feeling this, but I have to check and make sure that it's not just because of my own emotions about the team. Let me Let me maneuver through. Okay, but are the Niners the greatest show in sports right now? The greatest show in sports. The greatest show in sports. Is it the 49ers? Well, you would... Uh, There's obviously nothing in baseball. Like, no. No. Well, the Dodgers and Yankees are good shows. With Shohei Otani. Okay. And, and I know that that's hard for you to oh. even allow into your brain no, as no, a no. possible candidate. No, they are the that's two... That's a good show. They're the two best shows, and when they played on Sunday Night Baseball a few weeks ago, it was like, oh, this works. I get it. All star game. I can I can feel that, but but it's it's baseball. Maybe if Otani was pitching, that that would that would rise to the level. Maybe, but it's yeah. Is, is Otani facing Judge? That's fun for a moment. But a Dodger Yankee game also has a bunch of at bats from like Gavin Lux, like whatever. You know, I'm a 49er game. I mean, it's football versus baseball. Are like you saying me, this because you got the behind the scenes look and receiver because you know the characters so well? Because no. I I would vote the best show in football still and will remain so. It's Patrick Mahomes. Week seven at Levi's. Yeah, but that's you're making that a player. I'm making it a team. I don't think the Chiefs are all that interesting outside of Patrick Mahomes. Like Fair. the only other thing that, that that the average fan knows about the Chiefs is Travis and Taylor. I, I like people don't people couldn't even name receivers on that team anymore. They're, they're, they're like there's some good defensive players, but there's nobody like who else. Kelsey Mahomes, who else is even marketable? Speaking of on the show, Chiefs? they got Hollywood. What? Hollywood Brown. Oh, well, sure. Sure. Okay, we'll see how that plays. We'll see. But, I like, to me, 
that's a player versus a team. The yeah. 49ers, and, and again, I'm checking myself because it's our team. It's the team we cover all yeah, of local that. Local bias. Sure, but but there's also data that would suggest attendance data, home, road. Road fan data that you talked about, like yeah. the best road team. And even if you want to just take it outside of football and, you know, director of sports Lucas Alexander mentioning the, or you did, the, the Travis and Taylor effect. And I think that's why Kansas City would rise maybe to the top among casual fans, non-football fans. But even Christian McCaffrey with his now bride, Olivia Culpa, Culpo, rather, who is a Instagram star of her own, George Kittle and Debo, Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant. There are a number of, you know, Nick Bosa. There are a number of other factors on this team that make them popular beyond just football. Correct. I mean, what if I, what if I, like right now, everyone's talking about the receiver doc on Netflix. You think it's an accident that they're like, let's take two 49ers. Like we have five players, two of them, 40% of the show, 49ers. In fact, we're going to call it receiver and we're going to make one of our five receivers not a receiver. Yeah. Why would we do that? Why would we do that? Because he is mic'd up gold. Because he's phenomenal and he's a damn show. I will also say that a big part of entertainment in terms of fans buying in is storyline. And the fact yes. that the, the Niners are trying to get the monkey off the back, all that NFC Championship game for the last five years, they're right there, can't knock through the door. I think that's a great point. Like, there, there's, like the 49ers, out, and here's where I'm going to date myself for the 18th time this week. The 49ers right now are what Ross and Rachel was to friends. It's like the whole show was about can they can they just get back together? The angst that's like, oh, the, the Niners and the Super Bowl are Ross and Rachel. Can you just, can the two of you just get together finally? Will you kiss? Will you please get married? And the whole show is finding ways to keep them apart. And that's what the Niners have been in the whole Kyle Shanahan era. We're finding ways. We're like, here we are. Oops, we don't know the overtime rules. Like, finding weird ways. They were on a break, Willard. <laughs> Very good. A great reference. Very good. Yeah. The Niners and the Super Bowl are on a break. I mean. They are on a break. That's, that's. That's a huge piece of this puzzle. Well, I thought we were on a break and stuff, and so I decided to kiss this girl in a bar and stuff, and, um, uh, you know, she came at me and stuff, and so uh, we, we just made out and stuff. Possibly. And I took her home and, and stuff, and then Rachel found out and stuff, and I was a little disappointed and stuff. I'd go to that press conference. Yeah, like... The only difference for me is I root against Ross with all my heart. Why? He is annoying. Well... Rank number six on my friend's rankings. For oh, sure. Oh, okay. Even I mean, Chandler, who dissed me, and I got chewed out <laughs> on the radio about 10 years ago. Oh, that's right. Peace. Yeah. He got mad at you. Matthew Perry blew me up live. Yeah. And so. I have never had any interactions whatsoever with any friends people, except for I do think one time I was 78% sure that David Schwimmer walked by. <laughs> <laughs> but I was only 78% right. sure. I'm like, was that David? Eh, whatever. Let's That's go back, LA, though. back to the meal. That's yeah, LA for totally. You. Totally. Um, yeah. No interactions with any of those people. Are they the best show in sports? That's an interesting question. Are they? Like, definitively, you know, you brought up Dodgers, Yankees. Is there anything in the NBA right now? I was thinking about it. And, like, Boston, that was great. And they are probably still the best team. But are they a great show? Per se, like L.A. with LeBron is always going to be a big show. And yeah. if Bronny makes the team, that and when he makes the team, and when he plays with Dad, that'll be a big show for a day. For a day. And then he's back to the G League, and eventually he's off to Turkey to come off the bench for some team in Turkey because he's not good enough to even play in the G League. But other NBA shows, the, I think the Warriors, they're still a good show, but they're not the same show that they were. Yeah, but I like it, it's interesting. A lot of like Lucas even just whispered, "What about Anthony Edwards? What what about Ant?" Like I, I would argue, and this is just for me. I'm not necessarily talking about any individuals. Like you, you could give me individuals who are the best shows in sports. 
And, and I feel that. Like, if you want to bring up a Mahomes, I don't know where you'd go in the NBA. Some may say Ant. Some may say Giannis. I, like, I don't know. Where would you go in the NBA? If I if One individual that you want to watch play. I Steph is still on the list, is he not? Yes, yeah. and so is Jokic. Jokic, but, well, yeah. No, I mean, Luka. he's one, yeah. Luka. Luka's okay. a good one to watch. That's okay. a good point. Yeah. yeah. Val Bader. But. <laughs> yeah, Luka. Luka's also got a lot of David Schwimmer in him. For sure. It annoys the hell out of you. No doubt. Okay. Unlikeability. Ba- baseball. Both Sho- whine way too much. Yeah, Shohei. Ross and Luka. <laughs> I, see, but Ross, that means he's a good actor. He's doing that on purpose. But his character. It's like, dude, you are... You're going out with Jennifer Aniston, right, Rachel. Right. What do you have to cry about constantly? That's his character. I hate his character. That's fine. That means he's doing a good job. That's why he was ranked number six on my friend's power <laughs> rankings anyway. <laughs> but, but, but okay, other individuals. Shohei. You, you brought up what if Shohei was pitching again and he was facing Aaron Judge. Good God, yeah. Yeah, but, like, is there a team? Is there a team out there in pro sports right now because, yeah, by the way, let's bring up Caitlin Clark. I mean, bra- based on ratings and the way things are being driven right now, she is as big of a show right. as there is in sports. If we want to go, but I'm not. Individuals. Indiana Name another fever, fever exactly. Like, Name what, another fever, I dare you. Tell, tell me right now if there's a better show in sports, the whole package and picture, than the 49ers. The longer I think about this, I think the answer is no. Yeah, the, I think the answer is no. The networks would agree with you because they have six primetime games. Exactly. Six of the 17 are primetime. Is there anyone else in the NFL that rivals this? The Chiefs. Ah. Uh, and I think the, I would I don't think ratings what like again Mahomes, yes. Well, Mahomes and the fact they're going for three in a row. Okay. And you know, Travis Kelsey and his super super famous girlfriend those are all big factors. They are. And more fans have come to the NFL because of that than ever before. And you've got Andy Reid, who is an iconic head coach. And, you know, all the rest of the cast of characters doesn't really matter. Those are some big names up top. No doubt. Patrick, Travis, Taylor, and Andy. I, I, I do think that the, maybe the, so the Chiefs might uh, outdo the 49ers on, like, social media imprints among teens. Honestly, no, for sure. My 15 year old daughter can tell you everything about everything that's going on with all those people. You know, I told you last year, she's all in. She came into my room one time and she's like, Dad, do you know about Braxton Berrios? And I go, What? <laughs> Braxton Bar- I go, You mean the fourth receiver on the Dolphins? I go, Honey, we got a lot of Dolphins receivers that I'm going to think about before we get to Braxton Berrios. What the heck is what? Why are you asking me that? Well, he's dating this girl on TikTok. She's d- he's dating an influencer, Dad. She's got 8 million followers on yeah. TikTok. Okay, great. What, what? Her name's Alex Earl. There you go. And Lucas, of course. I do have you. a team to throw at you, though. Who Why will does be- she have two first names and neither of them are girls' names? What's <laughs> and happening? Neither of them That's are spelled great, correctly. But- <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Uh, another team that will be fun this year, probably not on the same level as the Niners, but the Ravens will be really fun. They added Derrick Henry, Lamar Jackson, always mm-hmm. a great show. Well, look, it's the NFL. Yeah. I, I think the Texans are a show. I think the Ravens are a show. I think the Chiefs are a show. I think the Chargers will be a show this year. Jim Harbaugh on the sideline. Justin Herbert is the quarterback. No more excuses. Can you play? You got Bosa on one end, Mac on the other, and you suck every year? What's the matter with you guys? Like, yeah, there'll be great shows throughout the NFL. I don't think any of them has an all-encompassing imprint that the 49ers do. Yeah, and part of that is the brand, and that's why I think about Dallas and the show that is Dallas because they are America's team, although they haven't been now for the better part of 25 years, in my opinion, but you still have a a quarterback everyone knows, you have a great receiver, and you've got a brand that is an iconic brand, and so Dallas will always be a show. That's a great point. Absolutely. Dallas is a show. Philadelphia is a show. I think Philadelphia, I saw a story today where uh, Nick Sirianni is like, his seat is not cold. I don't know if it's hot, but like the Eagles, after what they did last year, you know, you go to the Super Bowl, you're like the Eagles have some some Niners and San Francisco Giants, in fact, blended into one. Where it's like you've had near misses. You went to the Super Bowl, you had it, you fumbled it away. 
And then the following year, you were the big bad boys on the block. And then the Niners came in here, embarrassed you, and you never got your mojo back. And then what did you do? You went out on the offseason and you went boom, bam. You went big name coaching staff. You went Saquon Barkley. We are not messing around. You've got to be good this year. That's where the Giants part mixes in. We spent money, and you've got to be good. If the Eagles have a disappointing year, that's going to be a problem for a lot of people in charge. So that makes them a good show. It's hilarious that that is the case because I'm just looking at the last three years of Sirianni, and they are 34 and 17 with a Super Bowl loss. And the Niners the last three years are 35 and 16 with a Super Bowl loss. Super Bowl loss. But nobody's looking at Kyle like he's not even on a seat. He's in a hammock. Yeah, but those are like those are circumstantially different because I'd also argue when the Niners didn't make the Super Bowl, they had better years than when the Eagles didn't make the Super Bowl. Like the Niners the year before went to the NFC title game and many thought they would have at least had a chance to win if their quarterback had two arms, right? So there there there, there was that. Um also they're just in a different arc. Of their In timeline. a different market, too, yeah. yeah. Yes, but I mean, the Eagles have paid their quarterback. They were a veteran team, got a little bit too veteran at the end of last year. Like, they looked old in spots. You know, the Niners are like, we're not paying two receivers. The Eagles are like, we will. You know what I mean? Like, they're, they're and we're going to add Saquon Barkley. Like, they are all chips, middle of the table for right now. Which, which the Niners, I feel like, feel that way this year more than they have any other year. Well, they'll feel that way if they sign Brandon Ayuk. And I know the deal wouldn't kick in till next year, but it feels like if they bring back Ayuk as they should, and they're going to keep him no matter what, he's on a fifth-year option, but if they signed Ayuk, it would feel a little bit more like all chips in the middle of the table as opposed to, oh, we're going to let him play it out, and then we'll see, and then Debo can be cut, and then maybe Pearsall and all the rest of it. It feels like the Niners are playing more of a long game, and that's not a bad thing, but it does feel like, to your point, Philadelphia is looking at, you know, year four of Sirianni, like, we got to make this thing pop here soon or we're going to do something else. All right. I, I, I've had a moment to think about it. The Niners are the best show in sports. The Niners are the best show in sports. They don't, there are individuals who you could put in front of them. You know, we even bringing up the Chiefs, like, Yes, I'd argue there's there's social media attachment to what's going on there, but like cutaway to Taylor Swift is not a show. It's a side story. It's interesting, it's fun. It's not like she's performing in between plays. If she were doing songs in between the quarters, then maybe I'd be like, yeah, I think the Chiefs are a better show. She's just up there clapping. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> She's just leaning over to Brittany and sharing a thought or some popcorn. The Niners are the greatest show in sports. They've got the most angst. They've got the most players. They've got the most storylines. They, they, they've got that thing. They've got that thing. They've got the traveling fan base. They've got the primetime games. They've got all of it. The 49ers are the greatest show in sports right now. The Chiefs have five primetime games, including the... Season opener, Thursday against Baltimore right. that you earn when you're the Super Bowl champ. So they'll kick off the year again like they did last year when Detroit beat them. So I think Kansas City is probably the closest thing to it, but I can't refute what you're saying about them being the biggest show in sports. Uh-